Evil Within 2 Game Review. So Evil Within 2 is the second installment in the Evil Within series, uh, if you've played the first one. And it is as good as its predecessors, but lacks uh, in a few points that I will get down to later on. So the game starts after a couple of years where the original Evil Within 1 ends. And our main character, Sebastian, starts the game with anger and guilt over the loss of his family. I'm not going to go into too many details uh, as to give out spoilers. So I'm just going to give a very general overview of the storyline. So I put in 20 hours into this gameplay and um, I have some thoughts about what I liked and what I didn't like about it. So starting off with graphics. As you know, the success of any game depends on its graphics and Tango Gameworks, uh, who made the game, have done an amazing job with the graphics. In my campaign, something that struck me the most was the lighting, which is crucial for a horror game, a horror survival game. So great dim lighting in the corridors complement the theme of the game very well. Uh, overall, the graphics are good as well. Environment had great attention to detail and characters were also designed very well. Gameplay wise, after playing The Evil Within 2 for its entirety and finishing it, I can easily say the gameplay is solid. At the start of the game, Sebastian will be given a chance by a shadowy organization to rescue his daughter from the world of Union. Um, you'll understand this a bit more if you had played the first one, but you don't really need to because they do give you um, information when, at the beginning of the game as well. So Sebastian has to decide to go into the world of Union to rescue his daughter, which he obviously does, and that's where the game starts off with. So the gameplay is divided into two parts. In the first half of the game, you'll be fighting bosses um, who don't really pose a real challenge to you. And then the game suddenly changes in the second half. And in the second part, you in in encounter a very different environment. Um, in the second part, you'll be fighting a number of other bosses, but their strengths and variety of enemies uh, will make the game much more interesting. So you have to play on till the second part. It's, it's a strange game in that way that it completely, it very much changes in the first and the second. So in the game, you'll be exploring a semi-open world uh, full of challenges and side quests. The thing which I liked the most about the game was the semi-open world, um, which you usually don't see in horror uh, games. They're very linear. Um, and you can explore the world quite a bit. You'll be able to find side quests with the help of a communicator, a device you'll be using to find all sorts of quests and missions during your game. The beauty of side quests is that you never know where the signal you're getting from the communicator would lead you into. So it's, it's a bit of a surprise when you actually get to the location. The communicator is a bit of a radar sort of thing. And you don't know what's there when you get there, uh, coupled with the survival horror uh, theme that, that makes for a very interesting uh, gameplay. I mean, in my gameplay, I enjoy the side quests a lot as it surprised me every time with different scenarios. So they, they were very well made. Combat in the Evil Within 2 is good, but I also felt that fights with some bosses were now very easy to understand. Um, like in one fight, I was shooting the boss, but there was almost no reaction and the boss kept coming towards me and coming towards me. So I felt there was a need for some kind of audio or video feedback during the combat to let you know that you're wasting your precious ammo because you cannot kill the boss at this point. I see a lot of games suffer from this. I think Resident Evil 7 also had uh, this issue where you there was a point in the game that you confront the boss, but you can't kill the boss at that time. You're supposed to run away, but there's no... There's no cue for you to find out that you're supposed to run away. So what you wind up doing is you empty your entire magazine ammo into the boss and you're finished with your ammo. Um, so I think all games generally need, need, especially horror games, need to give us some sort of cue. When it is a good time to leg it and when is it a good time to actually, you know, when, when, fight the boss and kill the boss. But apart from this specific um, incident and experience, overall combat is good and with a variety of weapons you can make the combat even more interesting. Overall, I'm impressed with the diversity in the game. You will have options to either go for a straight fight, uh, firing your weapon to uh, you know, kill the boss or follow a stealth approach to make overall combat experience much more interesting. You also have three difficulty modes, casual, survival and nightmare. Each difficulty mode caters to different types of players. Like if you want your enemies to be extremely powerful, then you'll go for nightmare mode where you will have to give your 100% to survive, no doubt. 
However, even casual mode survival is not easy, especially if you attacked by a mob of monsters and with you know low level weapons in the start, you will most certainly be killed. So you will have to be very careful in the initial stages of the game to survive till you level up your character. During the campaign, you will not only collect ammo and healing items to heal yourself, but you will also find weapon parts to upgrade your weapon and the green gel from uh, Resident Evil 1 and the red gel, uh, which you get from the corpse of fallen enemies. Green gel will give boost to your health and also give you the ability to slow down time when aiming your weapon at any enemies. So weapons. In this campaign, I also like the fact that Evil Within 2 has a large variety of weapons from having a pistol to the shotgun also having some other types of unique weapons which makes the game more interesting to play it also allows people players to use different ways to kill the enemies which makes the overall gaming experience great during your campaign you will be collecting weapon parts to upgrade your weapon you will also get the chance to either upgrade all your weapons or focus on a specific one like in my campaign i focused on the pistol because that's what you get the most ammo for and I made it into the ultimate death machine because I upgraded everything for it but it's up to you you have that choice you can either upgrade all the weapons um, slightly or just go for a single one I like the fact that there's scarcity so you do have to make a choice by the end of the campaign you don't you won't be able to upgrade everything so you have to have a path if you which uh, choices you make in the game to upgrade your weapons so conclusion um, the Evil Within 2 offers, I think, a great survival horror game experience without very little compromises. The only downside of the game is its storyline, which is not very good and the dialogue delivery between Sebastian and other characters were at times just boring. You know, you just wanted to skip the dialogue, especially the minor dialogues, not in the main storyline, the side quest dialogues that weren't very interesting to hear. Apart from the storyline, I appreciate Tango Gameworks for adding side quests. They were a lot of fun to do. The gameplay is very solid, uh, where you will have to be very attentive to counter the mo monsters, else you will become the victim. Uh, very realistic graphics and lighting co complements the, the theme of the game very well. If I sum up the whole experience in one word, then it would be you know very, very good, very well done. If you're a fan of survival horror games, that is. Was it as good as the first one? I do not think so. I think the first one was much better. I think the first one really um, came up with new ideas and uh, the Evil Within 2 have kind of developed those ideas further. I didn't see any new idea or any new angle in this game. That being said, the first one was very good. The second one is also a great worthwhile game to play, worthwhile game to purchase. But uh, if you're expecting to be wowed, if you were wowed from the first one, I wasn't personally. So overall score rating, I would give it an 8.2 out of 10. And um, I hope that there's going to be an evil within three as well. If you like this video, then give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, then give it a thumbs down. If you have any questions about the game, just put them in the comments and make sure to reply back to them. And if you want to see more game review videos, then subscribe to the channel.